live update on the status of our boat. Um, today is April 10th, 2024. Um, we have been working diligently for the last uh, <laughs> four months. I Year. think it's been four months since our last update. We're no, in, it's been three. Three months. Yeah, it's January. All right. So the last update, we were sanding back primer. Um, since then, we did a coat of paint, sanded that back, <laughs> did another coat of paint, got it all looking spiffy spiffy. We have started to populate stuff and do fit out. Do some fit out work. Do some trim work. Um, we still have a lot to do, um, but we are expecting motors in a week and a half or yep. so. Guys a little tour and, uh, oh, and not to mention oh, all the uh, non-physical work we had to do yeah, for Rhode Island to get the a homemade boat registered um, and to apply for a title and all that stuff. Uh, we had to go through DEM, uh, Department of Environmental Management. Um, we had to schedule an appointment for officers to come down, inspect the boat, verify it's a homemade boat. Um, after that, it takes approximately two weeks for their reports to clear through the offices. Um, we then had to go down to the office, do all the paperwork, fi fill out all the forms, um, so, get copies of all of our receipts yeah. over the last, uh, everything up to date at that point anyway. We've added a few receipts since then. Plans. Um, it all had to be notarized. Yeah, everything had to be notarized and yeah. And all that to get the Hull ID number and registration Correct. number. Correct. The Hull ID was issued. Um, Which we have there blocked obviously but yeah. i don't know if you caught what it is on <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had to get improvised because uh you know it's all the stainless steel we had kicking around <laughs> um we went through that whole process we got the registration numbers we had the whole id we got the title um and we are a registered vessel um exciting time yeah exciting so yeah let's start the little tour we have applied three coats of paint sanding in between coats um we were able to do the first two coats within the overspray time um, and we had a bunch of uh, runs and drips that I really I wasn't happy with and I decided to go back and sand everything out. Um, we are not professional painters by any means. We did our best. Um, there's still some imperfections but everything is, is livable now um, and should be able to be buffed out from this point. Um, we haven't buffed yet. That is on the list. So we'll um, start back here. What have we done? So we're starting back at the motor wells. Uh, we installed the hatches with these pretty wooden rings. <laughs> um, we manufactured all of our own uh, wood backing plates and all that. Uh, finished it, cut the holes, installed, and that is so we can gain access to bolt the motors in. Um, these are the rigging hoses for the motors, which are installed. And Pla the plastic on there for. What was the reason for making the wood backers? Uh, so the main reason for making the wood backers for everything was to seal the core of the fiberglass. So because we did a foam core or a honeycomb on the top sections, um, the, we did a backing in the front and a backing in the back, and it actually sandwiches that whole panel, and it seals all the way around, so that core is now a sealed unit with that wood back. And it's better to screw into wood Correct. than it is fiberglass. Yeah, the, the fiberglass... It'll hold a screw, but not very well. Yeah. And uh, we would much rather screw into wood than the fiber wells. Right. So, yeah, so this is the motor wells. Both motor wells are done. Uh, again, with the rigging tubes ready to go. Um, walking down the side. What did we do here? Uh, these are our cleats. Shiny, shiny new. Um, I think we do have some pictures that maybe Cassie can throw a picture in here yep. and just kind of show how the top panel here has a shoulder on it and there's a piece from underneath so it actually sandwiches that panel this piece here is identical to this one here with a shoulder on it so we're going to cut a hole in the uh the chamfer panel on the boat and we're going to sandwich these two in and, and because that shoulder the wood is all it's all solid wood all the way through mm -hmm. so when we bolt it together hopefully we'll go here with a bolt through both sides and that bolt will sandwich the wood together screws into the bottom of the cleat here and that's that's solid on there it's so solid um, love it so yeah cleats are done um fuel tank vents uh this is actually the fuel fill which i had to uh redo because the other piece cracked there was a little too much pressure on that uh, fuel fill hose so i just have to reinstall the hose but it is run 
and we are going to caulk around everything after uh, you may notice some squeeze out on some of this stuff uh, we're going to clean that up quick and run a nice bead of caulk around everything afterwards to make it look nice nice um, these are our, our port lights for the berth uh, two port lights on each side moving up another cleat there's four, four down yeah, each four, side. Four cleats down each side, and we also have two cleats that will be installed by the, the anchor roller here for anchoring. Um, this, this pad here you see is for our nav lights, one of our nav lights. Uh, this actually goes into the... Uh, I guess you call it an impact locker. The wiring. Uh, the wiring. So I'm going to have to put an access hole through the anchor locker to gain access to wire that up. We also mm. touched up the bottom paint. That was another day. Oh, before. yeah. Yeah, all the bottom paint. Um, I did find a couple of pinholes in there, and there was a few spots when we actually rolled the boat over that got damaged. Um, one of them was from the rope when we were pulling to flip the, flip the hull. And then another spot was actually the original build frames um, had dug in a little bit into the, uh, the paint. And uh, I was able to just kind of repair that. So uh, when I was down there, I touched up all the bad spots, basically put a whole nother coat of bottom paint on there. Yeah. And above I mean, your head? Above my head, this is the anchor roller, um, all installed. Again, wood backing on everything, and those bolts go straight through the top of the hull. And then this side's kind of a mirror image. Yeah, uh, same thing. All right, it's the same thing, just different side. Uh, okay. So yeah. Let's go up into the cockpit. We have two access doors we put on the sides. Um, we basically need to get access to the cleats. Uh, we intend to do some sort of a, like a plano case holder over here. Um, tackle and whatnot. Yeah, tackle with a little door on it. And this side is going to be, I don't know if you can see it here, there's a backup plate here. Uh, I made PVC backup plates for all of the bilges and all of the, uh, the uh, like anything that could get potentially wet. So that's going to be for the battery switches and the ACRs that are going in. Um, scuppers have been installed. I still have to do the through hulls and put the hoses on those. All the hatches are done. These aren't glued in yet. The, the front two are glued down. Um, the back two I still have to get uh, done. Can you take a look in here? Yep. Take a peek. Don't mind the mess down there. We got to clean still. <laughs> so the, uh, those are limber holes. Um, it was recommended that they're all plugged uh, while we're uh kind of sitting you know while we're not underway and then if we ever do get water in there while on the way we can release the plugs it'll force the water to the back to the bilge it will be able to drain it through the bilge to the bilge pump right to the bilge pump there which again just needs a hose and the through hole which again working on and then above that is a little shelf just a little just a little shelf just a little shelf for storage why not uh this piece i have here in my hand is for batteries uh it has to get glued down uh, we're going to have three batteries, two star batteries, and one house battery for now. Um, we're going to see what our power consumption is like, and we're going to go from there. We did core. Uh, yep. We rebated the core around all of the hatches um, and sealed that good because that is, like, back here is definitely a wet spot. Yeah. Um, any rain, anything like that, we don't want any water info uh, infiltrating the core. Mirror image on this side. Correct, mirror image here. Because it's a catamaran, and you have to do everything so, twice. Uh, so uh, fuel tanks, um, our fuel system. Again, I gotta finish this off. I just gonna put hose clamps on there, uh, grounding wires. Um, that'd be our fuel filter assembly. They're all mounted. Um, yeah, and we kind of made it so we had access to everything. We're, we were, I, I don't want to not have access to anything on the boat. Yeah, so that's uh, why we ended up putting this. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so that is the fuel tank then on that side. And then the other side is the fuel filter. Again, you get access to get up there to get the clamps on, get ground wires on, all that stuff. So that's what the fuel fill looks like. Correct. And then the water fill on the side there. Water over here. A little dusty up here, but it's still very much a construction zone, all as right. you can see. Right. We are moving along now. Okay. So windows and doors, yeah. Uh, all the frames are now installed for windows and doors. I still have to make the actual windows for the back and the actual door frame for the back. Um, all the other window frames are now complete and glued in. Um, obviously you see the clamps uh, coming we in. We just finished that. Correct, we just finished that literally, you know, 15 minutes ago. Door. Um, 
think they look wonderful. I think it looks pretty good. We got some cleanup to do still. Yeah. Um, like we got still, squeeze out and whatnot. Yeah, just a little bit of sanding and, and touch up. Um, we still have to varnish everything. Um, we're kind of under the gun right now, so we, we held off with the varnish. We the epoxy coated everything with penetrating epoxy. Um, we're going to get the windows in and we're just going to tape everything off and we'll do all the varnish. Um, there's uh, eight coats of varnish. Mm -hmm. uh, the last two coats we're doing with a satin to kind of dull out that shiny finish. Over here is the dinette. We're still Sati. working on this. Yeah, yep. settee. So underneath the, the corner there, you can see that is the back of our clean. Those bolts go all the way through into the clean. So that's a solid, a solid finish. And we installed... We started to do some of the uh, luxuries. Uh, we just kind of needed a little break and we needed to change the pace. <laughs> and we wanted to see some stuff getting done. So yeah. some of the luxuries did get installed. Uh, fans. Uh, this is for a light. Uh, and... Fan, some electronics. Some dash instru instrumentation. Let's show Helm, it. Binnacle. Let's show it. Oh, um, galley too. Oh yeah, the sink, the sink's done. Still working on this. Yeah, it's not, that's low, not on, priority. The, yeah, it's low on the list. Um, and this is our helm layout. We officially put everything in. Yeah. Um, ran harnesses. Yeah. Uh, we can go over the electronics and stuff a little more later. That's better. Okay. All right. So these windshields are cut and fit, ready to go. I'm um, just waiting some UHP tape, 3M ultra high bond tape to come in. Um, should be here tonight sometime, hopefully. Uh, and then we can install these three windshields, whatever. Um, we did do all the conduits under the floor. We did three runs of conduit, uh, two inch and a half and one two inch uh, oh, run, right. runs of conduit. It's what's down here. <laughs> Just did some nice decorative rings around the top to kind of, you know, spruce it up. We wouldn't take pride in what we're doing here. Yeah, so. yeah, so we, we tried to do everything the best we could to make it as nice as we could. And then under here, this will kind of show how that kind of runs. So under here, we put uh, three LBs in the corner over here um, to make the 90 degree bend coming up. That way we can get all our runs through. And then over here, it comes to the 45s. And then these, these three lines run all the way down to the... Uh, the yeah, all the way down to the transom. Yeah, these hatches all have to get uh, finalized still, but they're all cut in, all three hatches going back on the floor. Also, the floor itself is, we should probably shut that before we break them off. Okay. Um, the floor is not final, that's why it's dirty. And some of the footprints are actually from when I painted. Yeah. Um, it was getting tacky, all the overspray was getting tacky on the floor, and it was nothing I could do to prevent the, uh, the footprints. Um, yeah, we are doing a... Oh. So down here we are in Z head. Uh, if you look down there, we made had to make a platform for our toilet uh, down in the hole, and this is our basically our toilet here. It's a composting head. A little composting head. Um, doesn't have mixers or anything. It's very rudimentary, rudimentary, but uh, it'll work for what we need. Ooh, that gap back there is gonna hold. Fishing poles, that's what I'm saying. That's why there's stuff there. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, into we the... some access port down into these compartments here, into the floor, um, just for visualization. Make sure if there's any water in there, we, we can access it to get it out, etc. This is the bath. This is the bath. Uh, fans, port lights. Fans, port lights, the back to cleats, coral shelf. Shelf. This is uh, the birth hatch, which I can't lift right now. Is that? You want to come lift that? Yep. Let there be light. On top of the berth, on the bow of the boat, um, up here we have anchor locker that again has to get finalized, but has been finalized with fiberglass. Um, we cored the center uh, bulkhead there, uh, filled it with fiberglass, three coats of bilge paint on everything. That goes pretty far down in the hole, you can see. Um, there will be a couple of drains in there, and also the, uh, the tow eyes for the trailer will get mounted through there. 
all these spots on the bow that you see, um, for instance, this, this is all going to get a total tread paint. Um, it's going to be a grip paint. Uh, it has a rubberized granular in it. If you can see on the side there, those little pencil marks uh, right there. And there's another one somewhere over here. Um, we are going to put two small cleats up there for anchoring. Um, we intend to do a bridle off of that and be able to hook our anchor line to that. To windshields. Uh, all three windshields are fit, ready to go. Um, all the wood frames are glued in, cleaned up, and again, all ready to go for installation, just waiting on tape. Top of the roof has all been painted and it's all ready. Um, we do need to go back and buff the whole bolt later, but that will be done after the fact. All the underside of the valance here, um, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, all that exposed honeycomb will get capped along with any spots in the boat, I'm oh, sorry, like these shelves. There's a little bit better shot of that because the honeycomb is ex exposed. We did use cherry for all of our woodwork on the boat. Um, yeah. So, and again, all these shelves have to get capped as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, we are exhausted. Yeah, burnout is definitely uh, approaching. Uh, we've been at this for... Four years. Four years. We've really been at it for the last six months, eight months. Mm, I would say a year. I'm just going to cut in here just to show you where we were one year ago and how much it has come along. Okay, bye. So much work is going into this, and yeah. It's time. It's time to enjoy it. Yeah, so we're pushing to get on the water this year, this spring. Hopefully be in the water by somewhere around June, um, if all goes well. Um, again, a lot of stuff it needs to get finished, can get finished on the water. Um, for instance, the, the caps for all this core on the shelving and stuff. Uh, the galley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the galley, the cabinets. Um, my thought is like I can build the draw assemblies as a unit, carry them down to the marina, cut the hole, and just glue the whole assembly into the boat. Um, I think that's going to be the fastest way to do it, um, and we'll still be able to enjoy the boat this, this year. Yeah, we'll still be working on the water probably all year, but we're going to enjoy it well. Yeah, we'll be able to go out for the weekend, enjoy, um, work for a few hours here and there, kind of you know putter around, get some stuff done. Um, we have plenty to do. Um, the we didn't mention the color. I'm sorry, the name. I'm not gonna mention the name too much. <laughs> but the color, I don't know if you want to mention it. You saw the outside of the boat, but it's gonna look completely different by the time we launch because we chose to go with a vinyl wrap. Correct. That way, if we get sick of it, we don't have to repaint. We can just peel it off and put a new one on. It's definitely different. <laughs> it's not a graphic, it's just a street color. The reason for going with the vinyl uh, was because of cost of paint. Yeah. Um, for the color paint that we were looking for, they wanted like $2,000 a gallon. <laughs> and we would have needed a solid two to three gallons to do, yeah. to do everything, to three coats. And uh, not including the clear coat on top of that. Right. Um, when it was all said and done, we, we got the wrap for... Under a thousand dollars. Yeah, under a thousand dollars. And that will cover the whole side of the boat. And it's pretty damn close to the color that we wanted. Correct. So, um, so it, it was well worth the uh, change of pace for the vinyl. Um, hopefully it holds up. We, we have seen a lot of boats that do get vinyl wrapped and they seem to hold up good. Yeah. Um, if we can get, I think we come up with three, three years, I think it was, out of the wrap. Um, it it's yeah, it, it's good for like seven years, they say, but if we can get at least three years out of the wrap, we'll um, we can justify changing colors in three years and not call it a waste of all. Um, so we chose the color we like for now, and that has to last us three years. <laughs> all the electrical still has to get done. Right. Um, we did run the the wiring harnesses for the motor are run. Um, fuel systems are 90%. You did mention we're going for motor speed. Correct. Which is huge. Yeah. I think we're going to take like a little break, maybe. Like mm -hmm. like a weekish off. <laughs> he says no. Uh, fine. Probably not. But 
I mean, there's plenty of work to do. We can, slow, once. We can slow down a little bit once the motors come in. I don't know if I can actually take time off, but we can definitely slow down. Right. You know, we've been going until 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night after working a full day, and yeah, it's, it's draining. Okay. Um, if we can go until 7 o'clock and take the rest of the night off, that'd be awesome. That'd be absolutely we go out to eat at one point in time. I know. <laughs> Decisions have been made as far as what's going where, um, with the cabinet to go in the refrigerator. We even have everything down to hardware. Like, we have yeah. everything except for the floors. Yeah, we don't have the floors, we don't have the batteries, um, right. which we need I, to get. I need to call on the batteries. Um, <laughs> and you should have batteries within a week. Uh, <laughs> um, I know I say this every single time. We'll try to update more. It's just not possible with the amount of work that we've been putting in. So, yeah. This is going to be a long video. Maybe we'll do, like, a five-minute update. But it's, I think it's more fun, like, for you guys to see, like, what we did in January to now. Like, we were just watching the video from January because we were like, where did we leave off? We did so much work in three, three months. Yeah. It's nice, though, because like, we're getting to the point now where we start seeing progress. Uh, the painting and sanding and fairing and priming and sanding and painting and sanding and, <laughs> and painting. Like, that was such Horrible. such an arduous task. And it's just incredible how uh, not deem unmotivated you get by, like, you just, yeah, it's, you need a change of pace. Were you say demoralizing? I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to have a change of pace. And now, like, we spend the night out here in two or three hours and we see something happen. We get, like, six jobs done. It's wonderful. Yeah. Hope you enjoy your update. Yeah. Thanks for listening to us. Waffle on. Waffle on. Waffle on. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we'll probably update. After motors. After motors. And also, if anyone asks, we're not having a lunch party. We're gonna be way too stressed. Yeah, yeah, we we are trailering the boat ourselves because it's a trailable boat. Remember, we're trailing it ourselves, launching it ourselves. So there's a lot of firsts happening within like ten minutes. So oh, and then we have to drive it to our slip yeah. and then dock it right with, away with, with brand new motors that aren't broken <laughs> yet. So yeah, there's no launch party. There's nothing like that. If anybody is going to ask. It's a big no. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, no, I think that's it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we will put up uh, update videos as frequently as we can from here on out. A lot is happening. Um, it is time consuming to make these videos. Cassie does a great job kind of keeping up with everything. Yeah, she's, she, she doesn't <laughs> take as much credit as she should, guys. So. Okay, bye. Thanks. I failed to mention that this beast has to come down. The boathouse is coming down this week. This weekend, yeah. And uh, we have our trailer. We bought our trailer. It currently isn't on the property. So <laughs> yeah. We have to move it for storage. So we have to take down the tent. Can you hold this up? So we have to take the tent down because... Because... <laughs> you see how close the roof is to the arches. Okay. And we have to raise... We have to raise the boat the approximately three feet. Yeah, it on the it's a beast of a trailer. It's not here. I wish we could show you, but we'll show you when it's here. I yeah, guess. we'll take a little video this weekend of the trailer and the whole process. And we're hoping to have the boat on the trailer by the end of the weekend. Yeah, and it's gonna be the first time we're gonna be seeing the boat in its like full correct glory, in its full <laughs> yeah, entirety. So yeah, just wanted to update you on that. Yeah, maybe we'll do a little something something for the demolishing of the tent. Stay tuned.